Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today we are going to be talking about the murder of Mary Carter. Whilst I do some digital art of uh, a scene from the Batman. Um, also, I just want to say before we start, uh, if my voice sounds a little bit weird or different from other videos, if you've seen them, uh, it's because I'm just a little bit ill at the moment. But I'm getting better, and yeah, if it sounds weird, that's why. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe down below for more. And let's get into it. Mary Carter and her two young children were walking on Madison Road in Cincinnati, Ohio at 11.30am on August 16th, 1980. Mary had thought she could catch a bus at the intersection of Madison Road and Erie Road. But when the bus arrived, the driver told her it didn't stop at her desired location. She needed to catch a different bus that stopped at the intersection of Madison Road and Vista Avenue. Disappointed, Mary and her two kids trudged off towards Vista Avenue. Mary wasn't the type of person who would normally accept a ride from a stranger. It was hot and humid that day, and her kids were tired. When a man in a blue pickup truck pulled over and offered the trio a ride to their destination, Mary accepted. She was likely grateful to get out of the heat and pleased that her children could take a break from walking, though it would turn out to be the biggest mistake of Mary's life. Around 1.45pm, a woman who lived in Cincinnati's East End was startled to see two young children wandering down the sidewalk in front of her house. It was clear that the youngest child, a two-year-old girl, had been crying. Her four-year-old brother was trying to comfort her. The woman rushed over to the children to see if they needed help, and the boy told her that they were lost. The woman took the children to a nearby firehouse and left them in the care of several Cincinnati firefighters. The children were too young to provide the firefighters with much information, but the boy mentioned that his mother had fallen asleep in the grass nearby and he had been unable to wake her up. The firefighters alerted the police about the situation and learned that the body of a young woman had been found near their location a few minutes earlier. Some children from the East End neighbourhood had been playing outside when they stumbled across the woman's body. She was lying face down in a ditch that ran through the grass near Eastern Avenue, in an area that was a known hotspot for local Although police thought at first that she was half naked, they soon realised that she was fully clothed. Her blue jogging shorts had been hiked up above her thighs. This likely occurred when her body was pushed into the ditch where she was found. It didn't take long for police to confirm that the deceased woman was 21-year-old Mary Carter. The medical examiner determined that she had been strangled to death. The motive for the brutal attack was unknown. Mary's daughter had blood on her when she was found, and she and her brother were taken down to a local hospital. Doctors determined that the child had fallen down while she and her brother were wandering around looking for help. She had cut her hands on the sidewalk but was otherwise okay. Her brother had no injuries. Investigators spoke with the children, but they were unable to provide much insight into what happened to their mother. The four-year-old recalled that they had been picked up by a man in a truck, but he was certain he had not seen this man before. The man had let them out of the truck near Eastern Avenue, at which point they had been unable to wake their mother up and had gone looking for help. Detectives were furious about the fact that someone had killed Mary in front of our two small children. They worried that the children would be psychologically damaged from the event and were determined to find the man responsible. With little to go on, they appealed to the public for help. Anyone who had seen Mary and her kids that day was asked to contact investigators. The bus driver who spoke with Mary told detectives that his bus didn't go to the location Mary was trying to get to. He told her to get the bus that stopped at Madison Road and Vista Avenue. Although he hadn't seen which direction she went after that, he assumed she was going to continue down Madison Road until she reached the Vista Avenue bus stop. Several motorists contacted investigators and told them that they had seen Mary and their two children get into a blue pickup truck shortly after she spoke with the bus driver. It had been shortly before 11.45am. The truck had pulled over at the southeast corner of Erie Road and Madison Avenue, right across the street from Woodrow High School. By combining eyewitness accounts with information they obtained from Ford Motor Company, detectives were soon able to release a detailed description of the truck. It was a midnight blue 1976 or 1977 Ford pickup truck with a 2-3 inch white stripe painted on the side. The truck had a black steering wheel and a light blue interior. It also had a single rear window, an aluminum rear bumper, and chrome box rails on each side of its truck bed. After carefully interviewing each person who saw the driver of the truck, 
a composite sketch of the suspect was created. He was a white male, 25 to 40 years old, with blonde or grey hair and a dark moustache. He had dark eyes and an olive complexion, with high cheekbones and hairy muscular arms. He had been wearing a white shirt at the time of the crime. Detectives followed up on more than 100 potential leads regarding the blue truck and its owner, but they were never able to find the truck and suspect they were seeking. They were extremely frustrated because with such a detailed description of the vehicle they had hoped to make a quick arrest. They cautioned the public that the man may have attempted to change the appearance of his truck. It was possible it had been painted a different colour or modified in some way. The public was asked to keep an eye out for pickup truck owners who had recently stopped driving their truck or had sold it and bought a new one. Although they were certain that the driver of the blue pickup truck was the killer and hoped that someone would eventually call him with his identity, detectives also considered other theories about who might have killed Mary. She was in the process of getting a divorce at the time of her murder and investigators interrogated her estranged husband to see if he had any involvement in her death. He had a solid alibi. He was 300 miles away at the time of the murder and detectives eventually ruled him out as a possible suspect. They also looked into the possibility that Mary might have recognised her killer. She had recently moved to a new home and had sold several old appliances that she no longer needed. The night before she was killed she had met someone at her old house and sold her washer and dry to them. Detectives wondered if the person who had bought them had been the man in the dark blue truck, but they were never able to determine who bought the appliances. Although investigators received a number of tips in the early days of the investigation, they soon dried up and the case went cold. No one has ever been identified as a potential suspect in Mary's death.